As you look towards the last quarter of 2024, you know, there really isn't any reason for optimism. To think things are going to get better. Hello, I'm Mike Bain from Christian Voice New Zealand. And as we look at today's culture through the lens of the Bible, the future is, well, it depends upon your point of view. If we were to look at the next quarter and beyond for a Christian follower of Jesus, it probably won't be looking any different to that of a non-believer. But there is a scripture in Matthew 5 that says that God makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and God sends rain unto the righteous and the unrighteous. Now, if a storm is coming, it doesn't differentiate. It'll sweep up everything in its path, both your place and your Christian neighbor, unless his name's Noah. It's about the only time ever recorded, you know, where God gave somebody a free pass, but even then, having to build an ark, well, wasn't really a free pass. Disturbing as some events are, how you view them, though, is another story. Jesus said when talking about things happening in our lifetime in Matthew 24 that we should know that he, Jesus, who is our saviour, is near and these things must happen. Now, easy to read the words, do not fear, because when you're in the middle of something like that, it seems to be a natural response. But what about events that are happening and being manipulated, which will impact upon us? I mentioned in the introduction, we are in for some bleak times ahead, many of which are being controlled, but as Jesus said, these things must happen, and happening they are. Now, if you've been watching earlier videos produced by us, Christian Voice New Zealand, we've been speaking about how the world is being manipulated by organisations like the World Economic Forum and the United Nations and its many arms into orchestrating both economic and political conditions to establish a one world government. Now many times I've spoken about September's United Nations 79th General Assembly. This meeting is the key which will unlock the highly anticipated Summit of the Future where some nations will willingly sign the Pact of the Future which represents a major step towards the creation of a one world government. Indications in the past in the New Zealand coalition government is that we as a nation won't be a signatory, but that was then, and this is now, so watch the space. Right now we're seeing a shift in our foreign policy from being neutral to aligning ourselves with the United States, Great Britain, and Australia, and of course the question comes back to, hey, at what cost? Again, it's a subject I have for years included into our presentations in the past with regards to being forced to choose. Hey, that day is here now. Our security or our economy. When you see what is being offered in the UN pact for the future, like everything, it sounds too good to be true. Usually it turns out to be a bit of a scam. The pact for the future has some great sounding promises like sustainable goals, closer relationships, a common agenda, an emergency response agenda in the wake of another pandemic, and yet history, if we want to accept it to be true, this sounds kind of like a Trojan horse parked outside of the city of Troy. Now given everything that we have experienced with governmental manipulation, surely we're not going to fall for that again, and yet history shows how complacent we can be. The people are. They're clearly, now, the puppets on a string. The pact looks exactly what the world needs right now. You really look at how we are learning to live and accept that we will own nothing but be happy. But really, look around at what is happening and what they, those agencies in control, are promising our future will look like. The Summit of the Future website says the outcome of the pact for the future will be a world and an international system that's better prepared to manage the challenges we face now. The pact for the future is likely to be a, another ship piece of the shift towards the world government by elected internationalist politicians. Hey, sleep if you must, but listen to the melodic lullaby that they're singing, full of promises, but there will be an awakening, one which is already known to you and I, and it's being enacted right here in New Zealand in the next couple of years. They'll call it a trial, but we have played along with the idea of a cashless society. Go on, scoff. But it's already happening. And New Zealand may not sign up to the Pact for the Future, but it's signed up for the Global Digital Compact as a part of the summit of the future. What's the Global Digital Compact, I hear you say? 
Thanks for asking. As the stated purpose of the GDC is to establish an inclusive global framework essential for multi-stakeholder action required to overcome digital data and, and innovation divides. The UN claims the Compact will help advance an open, free, secure and human-centred digital future for all while helping complete the Sustainable Development Goals. Let's not forget those. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand announced uh, the date to start this cashless regime, and it's going to be soon. And as I mentioned, it'll be a trial. But you don't spend serious money on a new banking system, a currency policy as a trial, if you're go not going to use it, right? It's what they're not telling you and I is the scary part, and this is how your money will be linked to your personal social security score. You know, back in January 2023, we produced a four-part video series on the Great Reset. Part three covered this form of social credit scoring and what it means. I suggest you go and have a look for it on YouTube and have a look. It's scary. The rumbling of the storm clouds continues over us. All the future forecasts are looking as bleak as ever. Economic recession, famine, unpredictable weather results. Uh, for Greta's sake, let's throw in climate change and the possibility of solar flares, but let's discuss the big one. And that is the situation of war. Those drums of war are getting louder by the day from all over the world and it's starting to fit. Forget the newspapers and any predictions Nostradamus may have conjured up, but the Bible, well, that's my source of news of what is yet to come. War may feature in this next quarter, whether it be China taking over Taiwan, Russia forces moving beyond Ukraine or Iran saying enough, enough, Israel's got to go. Look, whatever the scenario, the armies of the United States, Great Britain and the NATO alliance forces, well, they can't fight wars on three fronts. Gloomy outlook, I know, but just telling you like it is. In the New Zealand government budget back in May, our finance minister made provision for the biggest spend on our defence forces for decades. Nothing to do with having to buy a new plane for the Prime Minister or anything like that. But our Foreign Minister, the Right Honourable Winston Peters, has been warning in a veiled way the world is no longer safe. And he's right. In the past fortnight, I understand that Canada's military is on high alert, not because of the Russians or the Chinese, but from the threat posed by civil war when the United States implodes, probably after its election. Then watch China act. Russia will see the advantage, and then Iran will look boldly at Israel, as we said. It's all about to happen, and it starts right now. Not much of an outlook to get excited about, right? Unless you're a believer in God and what his kingdom has in store for this world. I've spoken continuously about a one-world government, the rise of the Antichrist, even spoken about the rapture when all the Christians disappear. But the one thing we talk to you about is the need for God's kingdom and why Christ should be in your life today. Look up, we're told. Look up. But first, I want you to have quickly look around and really open your eyes and see what it is that you see. Like Winston Peters said, do you see an unsafe world? Do you see impending economic collapse, catastrophe, riots and wars, the attack on everything we thought we knew to be true? You know, no man can fix us. No man can sort out this messy world. That's why Christians have this positive outlook. We didn't have to read about the world situation in the newspaper or online or wait for Simon Dallow to mention it on the One News. No, we read the Bible. We believe the words written about how God himself dealt to his own people and how he dealt with other nations. So I'm calling on you to take, today to take another look at God's word. Talk to your Christian workmate, relative or friend. Ask them, what is it that you see? The last quarter of 2024 is going to be one of turmoil, one which will cause a great deal of angst. Why do you think? Why do you think the Warren Buffets of this world are attempting to divest their fortunes from companies? Why there is talk from high-ranking military about war? Why politicians are trying now to fortify their economies? And why the weatherman keeps telling you about the storm fronts about to hit New Zealand? I'll tell you why. It's because of these four words. The end is near. And it's for that one reason, just one, when I say, when I declare, as John the Baptist said, did, repent, for the kingdom of God draws near. And soon we'll all be looking up for salvation. 
and it'll arrive in the return of Jesus Christ. Can I urge you again to reach out to your local church, your Christian friend or your relatives, just get on your knees and ask God today to help you. Get to know him, to understand why these things must happen and understand that regardless of the persecution Christians go through, understand why they remain calm in a cold foreboding world with all its tempestuous storms only because they know what the answer is going to be and the reason they know is because they have read and understood and above all they've trusted in God's word, the Bible.